So I've got the high mileage gum out. I've got the gum out regain complete fuel system clean. This is for vehicles over 75,000 miles. And welcome to today's Rowdy.com Big Six. We call it the Big Six in honor of Gum Out Regain Complete Fuel System Cleaner, which cleans six of six engine parts, unlike Lucas Fuel Treatment, which only cleans three of six engine parts. So I, you know. Why would know, you want Lucas? I don't know what else there is to say. For Buzz Cutler and Bassmasters, we're talking Bristol. We're talking the Irwin Tools Night Race at Bristol, one of the signature events of any season. But with the recent repave Cutler a couple years ago, adding a second, maybe even a third group to this racetrack, has the dynamic of this race changed a little bit? Well, it certainly has, according to Clint Boyer and Jeff Burton. Let's hear what they have to say about it first. I think racing at Bristol isn't the way it used to be. I think it's a, a lot better. It's racing now. You know, you don't go up on somebody and just beat them out of the way and crash them to get around them. Um, you know, there's there's uh, different lines. You can run the outside. You can run the bottom. You can dime in the corner a lot better than you used to be able to. I mean, there's, there's a lot you know, more lines on the racetrack than they used to be. So it's not just locked down on the bottom and root the guy out of the way to uh, to get around him. This Bristol is more of a racy racetrack. It's not as much of a wrecking racetrack. It's not, it isn't, it isn't that the racing's less, you know, you're not, it's not less competitive. It's just less wrecks. I think the bottom line, Bess, is you just have more options now. Not only do you have a wider racing group, and can you make things happen a little bit more without all the beating and banging. Remember, too, that if you get stuck back in the pack late in the race, you could take the wave around rule to get back on the lead lap. Well, I think when you think about the dynamic of this race in the past, when it's been a one-groove racetrack, to pass anybody here, you had to get underneath them somehow, and a lot of times that involved contact. This always came into play early in the race when you thought, hey, if I can just stay on the lead lap, I can win this thing. You maybe had to start in the back. You look in your rear view mirror and you're like, crap, here come the leaders. And you get very aggressive trying to get to the front. Now you have some options as far as passing people up high or working your way around them. You don't have to get quite as aggressive to stay on the lead lap. And then at the end of the race, the same dyna dynamic is in play when you're trying to get around the guy for the win. A lot of times you had to use the bump and run. We've seen it so many times here. Now you don't have to use it quite as much. But that's not to say it won't still be but there. there. Will, it's still a short <laughs> track. There will still be contact out there. And I just think it's a little different, the dynamic. And though. there will still be pit strategy at the end of the race. There will still be guys who are going to take two tires in order to gain track position. Well, I think that's especially true when you think about what we've seen the last couple weekends with pit strategy, where at a place as roomy as Michigan, four-tire call doesn't work, doesn't work at Pocono, didn't work at Indianapolis. So you'd look at a short track where, despite the extra room, track position is still going to be very important out here. It's hard to imagine a winning race car coming in and taking four tires late it's more easier to imagine a guy staying out or taking two and winning this thing, yeah. but you just never know with a new tire package. You, you don't know, and, and and this is a new tire. That And Denny Hamlin had the opportunity to test this tire. Does that give him an advantage? I think it might give him a slight advantage. He's one of those guys, Cutler, if we're talking drivers, that has knocked on the door here but never won. Top five and three of the last four. Greg Biffle, two fourth-place runs in a row here, two top five runs in a row here. He's another guy that you could see winning this race, but... When you talk about drivers, the name that comes to the fore has to be Bush. Kurt with five wins, Kyle with three wins. Kyle with what? Three wins and two seconds in the last eight races two wins in the last three races, it's hard to look past the 18 car. It, has, it is hard to look past the 18 car, and it's hard to go with the two car. The last time he won here was his first race out at Bristol for Roger Penske. But don't forget, he was very strong in the spring, nearly won that thing, couldn't quite hold off Jimmy Johnson. I am actually going to look past both Bush brothers, and I'm going to look over to the Roush Fenway Racing Camp. They're certainly a team on the rise. Nobody has had a better run of late than Carl Edwards. I think his finishing average is even better than Kevin Harvick's, and he has won this race two times in the past. So I picked him last week at Michigan. He let me down. So I'm going to pick him this week at Bristol. Well, I, I like Carl Edwards a lot. And I think a, a win here would certainly validate the progress that that team has made, whether it comes from Carl Gregg or even Matt Kenseth, who was a lot better here before we switched race cars. I, I got to say, the storylines intrigue me because Jimmy Johnson looks like he's not so good. If he were to win here all of a sudden, he becomes more of that mammoth presence we're used to seeing heading into the chase. Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart have not won. For them to consider themselves championship contenders, or maybe it's more from a fan's point of view, wouldn't you like to see these guys get a win before they get into the chase? But I just simply cannot look past 
Kyle Busch on this racetrack. And wouldn't it be great if he were going for the triple when we get there Saturday night? So I like Kyle Busch in this thing. I think he's going to win the race and uh, get himself back on track. The other thing to keep your eye on is the Mark Martin-Clint Boyer battle. Those are the two guys who are duking it out for the last chase eligible position. you got to think maybe at a track like Bristol, Clint Boyer has a little bit of an advantage. But remember what happened to both those guys last spring. Exactly. And, and, and that was when Clint finished 40th. And, and uh, Mark finished 35th. And if that happens again, all of a sudden, the top five by a Ryan Newman or a Jamie McBurray or a Casey Kaner and even a Dale Jr., all those guys are within 130 points of 12th place Clint Boyer. If Martin and Boyer have problems, those guys can put themselves back in the mix, and each one of them is capable of a top five run. I'm sure, of course, one of them will probably be eliminated with a bad finish on Saturday night. But it's very, very interesting this race is with respect to the chase. Yeah. All right. I can't, I can't help but remember when Casey Kane was so dominant here before Carl Edwards took the win away from yep, him. Yep, all those guys could run well here, and certainly they'll it, run better with a little gum out regain. Complete fuel system cleaner in their car. Yeah. Ten times the deterrency of Lucas Fuel Treatment cleans six of six engine parts and sponsors Rowdy, too. I think gum out is what has made the difference for Richard Childress Racing this season. That's got to be it. All right, for Cutler, I'm Bass. We'll see you next time, and especially Monday, to talk about what happened at Bristol on Saturday night. We'll see you next time. Rowdy.com. Say it like it is. Say what like it is. Rowdy.com.